Hello everyone, making a video about how to enable a Honeywell brand model 219 tilt of might bulb flash unit to be used on a modern digital camera. Now a little bit of background, when these units were made there were no digital cameras. There was uh, mechanical cameras with uh, fully manual focusing, so a Nikon F, Nikon F2, um, Canon, uh, F1 days, uh, Olympus OM1, all those all those years. In fact, the, those uh, uh, Olympus came by even later than this unit was made. And of course, it could be used with other uh, non-SLR cameras. It could have been used with leaf shutter cameras of all kinds, as long as they had a PC socket. Now, you'll notice that the um, built into the unit, and it's built in, it cannot be removed from the unit, is the PC, a shutter cord, they call it. It's called a shutter cord, a PC cord, uh, and it has a PC mail connector. That there's a pin in the center of this connector and a shield surrounding it. Original factory uh, configuration of this unit, when the battery and the capacitor are normally installed, is the pin is negative and the surrounding shield is positive. Now, in the days when it was made, it simply didn't matter if that it was negative pin, positive shield, or positive pin, negative shield, because the flash bulbs don't care about polarity, the unit doesn't care about polarity, and the cameras didn't care about polarity. All they had was a, a contacts, like a, um, a light switch, a physical, mechanical contact, and the elect didn't matter which direction the electricity was flowing. Fast forward to the modern day, cameras no longer have physical contacts that carry any meaningful amount of current. Uh, there, there's a uh, solid state circuit, a transistorized circuit that's used to allow the uh, power to flow to a um, flash unit. Those modern transistorized circuits do care what the polarity is. And unless they're very deluxe, well, like with the footnote is, the exception is a very deluxe circuit can be made where the part no longer matters. But for the most part, all the camera makers, it does matter. Not only matters for the cameras, digital cameras, it matters for this um, radio trigger. This is a Yong Nuo brand RF603 for Nikon, in for Nikon, uh, Roman numeral 2 model. And uh, it, matter, it has to have a positive pin polarity uh, the pin has to be positive, the shield negative, not the other way around as it, the Honeywell comes normally. Now, originally I had uh, taken a uh, PC cord, cut it open, reversed the wire so that I could interpose it between this connector, a female connect side on this, and then it would present a male connector to the Yong Nuo, which these are nice uh, radio triggers because they do have a PC socket. It occurred to me while ordering parts and uh, to do that uh, with the with a female male household that could be flipped around to get the polarity right and on and on and on I could go about that. Why not just do this? And this is the easiest way and it works perfectly. Under the battery cover, there is the battery. And this is a modern uh, Excel brand 504A, 220A. 15 volt battery costs about nine dollars. The originals were ever ready 504s or the equivalent number from other companies like Burgess, Mallory, Maxell. So this new battery normally would have the positive terminal towards the top. The top is up here where the flash head is and negative on the bottom and the capacitor next to it and it's battery capacitor flash. The battery charges the capacitor first and the capacitor releases its energy to the bulb. That would have the arrow pointing up. It actually has an arrow. You should, this arrow should be pointing up. But to work with digital cameras, it or this RF603, the battery has to be put in upside down, positive facing down, and the capacitor has to be correspondingly reversed also, so the battery and the capacitor match. So the, the current flows through the capacitor, charges the capacitor the proper direction. Doing that, nothing else changes on the unit except What's presented to the PC mail connector is positive uh, voltage at the center pin inside the uh, center pin, and the shield gets negative voltage, and it's ready to go. And that simple change obviates you know no cutting open wires, no uh, extra cords to reverse polarity with the household uh, pronged plug and its corresponding female. It just simply 
uh, is ready to go. So I wrapped the cord rather just for to you know get it out of the way because it's longer than it needs to be for this application, and plug it into plug it into the PC and it's ready to go. And this is wireless, so you no longer in the days gone by you had to connect this to the camera either directly or with an extension, and you had wired connections. But with wireless, it's wonderful because you simply can hold this in your hand with a bulb and all sorts of maneuvers with it, light painting with the bulb, uh, just just everybody that's used these, uh, some form of radio trigger knows the advantages of it versus a, uh, a cord. So once that's done, uh, it's you, you could use other brands by using the Yang Nuo. With this one, uh, before you put a bulb in on this brand, uh, turn it on. So it, the switch goes all the way forward for being a receiver unit or a transmitter to fire the camera. You could fire the shutter of the camera and other units along with this unit. These have a lot of capability, these uh, Yang Nuo RF603s. You look it up on the internet for more information on those. Uh, for, bulb, for just firing the bulb uh, without tripping the shutter, the switch goes uh, to the middle position and this button up here will now function as a, if it normally it would be used with electronic flash, it would I would furnish a way to just fire the flash, take a light reading if you wanted to. In the case of the bulb, it's going to fire the bulb. And so, um, I'll show you how that works. We This flash unit will take uh, three different base bulbs. One is this, what they call AG, all glass. It's all glass said because it's only got these two wire terminals sticking out of it at the bottom. It is a, um, an inexpensive bulb when it was made uh, to manufacture. has quite a bit of light. And my other two, video, two videos show the relative performance of this tiny little bulb, the AG series, whether it's, uh, they come in numbers one and three, blue and clear, and the M series. The M series is said to be its miniature or midget relative to the final bulb I'm going to show. It has a, a base, it uh, looks like a bayonet, but it has like a, a annulus groove cut in it that uh, it not, it doesn't have the classic little ears or tabs that are spaced 180 degrees apart like a true bayonet. And the flash unit will accept these. M, these will be M2, M3, M5, M25. All those fit, no problem, work great. And if you have, um, you find these now and then, these, this is a PH8, this is an old, old bulb. Uh, it was supplanted by the miniature midget base bulb, and this is a full-size bayonet. And this, uh, the bulb numbers, you get the PH series. You had numbers 5, numbers 6, numbers 25 and 26, depending on the brand and the type. The 6 and 26 were focal plane. 5 and 25 were regular um, synchronization. That's a whole other video about synchronization. But it accepts all three, this uh, real bayonet, the midget, miniature, and the AG. There was other size bulbs with even bigger bases. There was one that literally had, one style that literally had a uh, incandescent light bulb base, screw base. Now, as I said, you could use the radio trigger. If you want to connect it to a camera, most modern digital cameras do not have, if you want to use wire connection, they don't have a PC socket. They just don't make cameras with that anymore. Um, what you'd use is, and this is an Icon brand, but it's a uh, hot shoe to PC adapter. So you would just insert this on the hot shoe, tighten it down, and insert the uh, flash cord there, shutter cord it to that. And with the uh, polarity reversed, it works just fine. Nikon cameras can take up to 250 volts. A Canon can take up relatively high also, I understand, but I'm not sure. This unit presents 15 volts terminal voltage to the camera or the radio trigger. That's well in the capability of the Young No RF603. Double check your camera before you hook it up to the hot shoe with a hot shoe PC adapter. Make sure your camera can take 15 volts. That's not a lot, but some cameras are so delicate, that's even a lot. So, too much. So, that is what you... Um, uh, want to do before you hook this up. You can always, the safest way is to use a radio trigger. You get the convenience of not having the cord and you guaranteed not to hurt your camera because this unit carries all the, uh, is presented with the 15 volts at the terminal. Final thing is like, how did I figure, if you want to double check uh, any of these polarities on a uh, flash cord, 
what I did was I connected one of my meter leads to this with an alligator clip and probed the center terminal with a, it's a dental pick tool, really sharp tool that can get onto the center terminal. Even that, it's like playing operation because you need the battery installed in the unit and a flash bulb installed in the unit for you to see the voltage at the terminal. Both those conditions have to be the case. Now, if you accidentally, you could imagine probing that terminal, uh, that PC male connector, touching it, slipping off of it and onto the shield, you know, grounding it, connecting the two together, fires the bulb. That's what happened with this bulb. Again, the old game operation comes to mind. So all I did was take a some aluminum foil, wrap it around the base of the bulb, so now it's shorted out from the center terminal here, which is normally isolated from the uh, rest of the base. And now it's a now you can put this into the uh, flash unit, and it will function. Uh, you'll it'll it'll appear as if it's a good bulb. So let me do this. Let me uh, turn off the light real quick. It has a nice uh, check. So if, if there's a bat, you want to check to see if the bulb is bad or good before you take the photograph. Back in the day with the film, you know, you didn't want to, you know, you only had 30 some odd exposures with your roll of film. So exposures were precious. And uh, you see, that means that the bulb is good. Well, it's good in this case. It's like putting a penny in the old fuse box. It's like it's shorted out. So I needed that to make the, make the voltage appear here without me burning bulb after bulb after bulb because of slipping off the terminal with that dental pick tool. That's just some side information you don't need to know about it. The important part of this video is turn the battery upside down, put the battery in upside down or reverse polarity, take the capacitor out, put it upside down with it, reverse polarity along with the battery and the unit's ready to go. And here's what it will do. So this is an actual bulb. Remember I was not going to follow my, I want to follow my own advice. Take the bulb out, make sure this unit is turned. I'm going to turn it to the middle switch position. So it's just a bulb. Uh, it'll act as a, um, it'll fire the bulb only. And it would fire other, whatever other ones of these are locally in the room. And check the bulb. Yep, bulb's good. And all that needs to be done is that you, uh, you know, and you don't want to waste these but bulbs. These bulbs cost bulbs cost like anywhere from 15, 20, 25 cents a bulb to a dollar a bulb. You know, depending on you know, eBay's where you get them. No one makes them new anymore except some company in Ireland that charges a fortune. So there it goes. Works just fine without the battery reversed. Without the battery and the capacitor reversed, it just will not work. You can push this button all day long. You can do whatever you want. It just will not work. So. A simple fix that came to me while I was ordering cables and uh, male and female household plugs to as cleanly as I could reverse the polarity without cutting the wires open. Turned out not needed at all. Turn, 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 the, turn the, both the capacitor and the battery, both of them, upside down, and you're ready to go. And it, uh, just check on your camera if you do want to connect it to the shoe. The, uh, it's a cold shoe on the flash unit has to be con uh, fired with a shutter cord so that means you have to have a hot shoe adapter or uh, an actual older camera with a PC which you could leave the rever polarity reverse for film cameras of the old days because again it didn't matter what the polarity was. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you. It may be something you want to get. They're cheap on eBay and uh, you know they're very powerful. You can see my other two videos about the relative performance versus a Vivitar 285HV flash unit.